we haven't spoken spoken yet about the fiscal effect here, mm -hmm. but it is estimated by uh, LBO that it would be between 23 and 39 million dollars in lost permanent loss state revenue to the GRF, plus an additional 5.9 to 9.8 uh, in terms of reduced local tax collections. So my question to you is, if I'll, I'll take the conservative end, 20, 25, 26 million dollars a year uh, permanently lost to the GRF, that's exactly the amount. It just so happens that it would cost to make sure that every young person in Ohio had free access to breakfast before school. Mm -hmm. Is it the industry's position and your association's position that the money is better spent subsidizing their gun sales or feeding hungry kids before school? I'm, I'm not going to answer that question the way it was phrased. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't think that was appropriate, really. I mean, I don't think anybody in the industry would say that. Um, I certainly wouldn't say that. I'm just saying that people shouldn't have to pay to exercise their constitutional right, and we shouldn't be putting a price on the exercise of a right of the people of Ohio. But I would not, I'm not going to answer the way it was phrased, I'm sorry. Follow up? Quick follow up. I think you did answer it, which is what I would expect, which is you wouldn't say that, and the industry wouldn't say it. And I just want to put a finer note on what the much more accomplished attorney to my right distinct clarified about the Second Amendment. This is not about there, there is nothing in the Second Amendment about the right to purchase arms. So it, the notion that you have a right to purchase firearms is not in the Constitution. I know you're not a constitutional scholar, but you're up here talking about the Constitution as the rationale for why we should take money away from what could be used to fund breakfast to subsidizing gun sales. And money is fungible. That's how it works. So it's a fair comparison.